Bryce Kenny is on a roll after winning his first event championship of the season. But can he lead the Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior to back-to-back -back wins in Philly? Adam Anderson continues on as the series points leader, but does Gravedigger have what it takes to bury the competition once and for all? Or will Camden Murphy work his way back to the top of the leaderboard by winning the event championship? Find out next on Monster Jam. It's round 19 at Lincoln Financial Field in downtown Philadelphia, home of the Eagles. And tonight's home to the stars of Stadium Championship Series Red. Hello, everyone. I'm Scott Jordan, alongside Zombies Bar and Moose Sour. Crack is Nick Pag. The Rulo got back into the win column with his second freestyle win of the season. That ties it for second on the series with Camden Murphy and Todd the Duke. Barry, what do you attribute to Nick's freestyle success? Uh, Nick comes out with a vengeance. Whenever it comes to freestyle, he captures those fans with the high energy moves that he pulls off. And they reward him with some great score. And the monkey is finally off the back of Bryce Kenny Barry as he finally won that long-awaited overall event championship last round. Yeah, I'm happy for Bryce. He's such a fierce competitor. You want to make sure that he goes out there, puts his best foot forward. I'm glad for that whole team. Adam Anderson still has a series points lead. Camden Murphy trails him slightly, but the question remains, Bart, is Bryce Kenny have enough left in the tank, and is there enough time for him to make a serious run at the championship? He does. He's got to not falter, though. I'm talking about every round, he's got to be right there on the brink of winning, and that's the only way to do it, consistency. We caught up with the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior driver in this UNOH pit report. It's so rewarding just to get the monkey off my back a little bit and, and finally get that overall event championship that we've been after all season long. And it really just takes that pressure off. And now we know what to go out there and do. Uh, we know how we can run. We know what, what type of results that we can get. We just got to repeat it this weekend in Philly. We're closing back in on Tom Mintz, and uh, I think he's only 12 points ahead of me. And, and I think to, to regain that third place spot that we had previously in the season, it really just takes consistency. But Tom is as consistent as it comes out there, too. So we've got our work cut out for us, but we're up to the challenge. This track that we're racing on this weekend is my least favorite track that we've run on all season long. Um, it's kind of eluded us. We got to go out there and do something cool. We got to go out there and roll the dice, gamble a little bit with a couple of these hits, doing something that's a little bit different than just going north to south that that track kind of wants to force us into as drivers. And we're going to make it happen right here in Philly this weekend. Bryce is one of 12 competitors in tonight's lineup. Barry, who do you like to take the trophy in Philly? You know, I'm going to stick with Bryce. I feel like he's really confident after watching that interview. I feel like he has what it takes to come out on top here tonight. A lot of heavy hitters in this lineup. And as Bryce said, this track very unpredictable. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Now we take a look at the series point standings. Adam Anderson has a 27 point lead over Camden Murphy. Tom Men still in third with Bryce Kenny right on his tail. Tom Leduke has taken over that fifth spot. Well, there's a battle between Cole Bernard and Caleb Blood. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on for tonight's action here in Philadelphia. Drivers will compete in three competitions, racing the Great Clip Skills Challenge, and freestyle points are awarded based on finish with the winner earning 12, and the driver with the most points is the overall event champion. And now it's time for track talk. We heard Bryce say this track is his least favorite, but this Philly dirt, always very loose and slick. How would you navigate this track here tonight? You really have to be methodical with your movements. A little bit less input with the steering wheel. It goes a long way when it comes to a slick track. These trucks are very nimble, but they're very big and heavy too at the same time. So you really have to watch your, your steps, I say, on the track. You have to really hit your mark. And the big air always a factor here in Philly. I feel like Philadelphia elevates our trucks into the sky. And Max D, El Toro Loco will kick off round one. Velociraptor, Jester, Kraken, Black Pearl, Vendetta, Bakugan, Dragonoid, the other matchups. Gravedigger, Megalodon, Soldier Fortune, and Great Clips, Mohawk Warrior all get the first round buys. What do you like out of this racing bracket tonight, Barry? I'm really looking at that first matchup, Max D versus El Toro Loco. It's a spot where you have to get a good time, and really you want to make sure you advance. Otherwise, you're first in the Great Clips Seals competition. And the winner of that matchup goes on to face Adam Anderson, so that may be uh, on their uh, horizon as well. 
Let's get down to the track here for the first race of the night. And it is going to be that match you talked about. Jamie Gardner, El Toro Loco against the professor, Tom Mentz and Max D. Tom waving to the crowd here in Philadelphia. But uh, the fans don't vote here in racing, Bari. You have to be the fastest one to the finish line. And now they are pulling to the starting line. And we will see this racing competition get started between Overboard Motorsports and Tom Mentz in Max D. Jamie Gardner repping that Overboard monster truck with the El Toro Loco body now on it. And here we go into that first corner. Look how wide Jamie Gardner goes. Wow, it is very slick over there in that right lane. That, that's going to be a thing to keep your eye on all night long as Tom Mintz blows past him in the finish. Big time win for Tom Mintz. He will advance to meet Grave Digger. Take a look at the original super glue glue to the action replay. One of the things you want to notice about Tom Mintz's truck is it has no sway bars on it, so it really leans in these turns, but it paid off for him here this evening for sure. 17.590 gets it done. Max D moving on. Next up, riding for Team Throttle Monster, Travis Mowry in Velociraptor. He goes up against Team Tom Fullery's Matt Pagliarulo and Jester. And Barry, I'm really hoping that Jester flies around Philadelphia like the Clown Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> the Clown Prince of Bel Air. Did, did he pay you to say that? Uh, <laughs> I'm here all night. We got a race going on, and it's a good with Travis Mowry. Nice drift turn. Matt Pagliarulo was right there with him, but look at Velociraptor. Wow, this right lane is really slick. Look at the dust flying off of Jester. That's going to be a developing story all night, I believe. Beautiful turn for Velociraptor to finish it off. Travis Mowry will advance. Take a look at the original Super Glue Glue to the action replay. Travis Mowry is a great driver on this type of track, and he shows it there. Look at all the dust, as I mentioned before. That's very uncharacteristic of a Monster Jam track, so that's going to be something to keep our eye on. With a time of 18.102, Velociraptor moving on to the second round. Next up is going to be former Monster Jam Rookie of the Year, Nick Pag, the Rulo and Kraken. He goes up against two-time Arena Series champion Cole Bernard in the Black Pearl. Cole's got two racing wins on the season. Here we go, Kraken and the Black Pearl. All right, they're dead even off the start. Let's see how these turns play out. Nick is through his turn great. Cole's got a little drift going. He's a little bit behind. Nick Pagliarulo with the lead going into that final turn, but Cole Bernard putting it on him. It's not enough, though. Nick Pagliarulo gets the win. Kraken moving on. Take a look at the replay. This dirt here in Philly is so loose and dry, it seems like these trucks are having a hard time rotating through the turn. Covernard pushed his way through that last turn, and it really cost him a lot of ground. 18.349 gets cracking into round two. Next up with Team Throttle Monster, it is Mike Christensen in Vendetta, and he goes up against Camden Murphy in Bakugan Dragonoid. Is it safe to say, Bari, that every racing round is crucial for Camden Murphy to advance with the series on the line? Crucial is an understatement. I mean, Camden shined so much early on in the season, and he's kind of hit a roadblock now, so this is his chance, every chance he gets on the track to make up that ground. He's got four wins on the year, tied with Adam Anderson. Vendetta across the chalk line first. Into the corner we go, taking it tight as Camden Murphy. But look at Vendetta, what a line he took in that left lane. Wow, he picked up so much momentum going down that straightaway, and it's going to pay off for him, Scott. Look Unbelievable. At this. That is an upset, upset of the night so far. Vendetta moving on. Check out the replay. Mike Christensen had a whole lot of steam coming off the straightaway, and he needed it because Camden Murphy didn't give him much room across that finish line. Let's take a look now at the bracket for round two. It's going to be Grave Digger up against Max D, Megalodon versus Velociraptor, Soldier Fortune against Kraken, Great Clips Mohawk, Warrior versus Vendetta. A lot of great matchups in round two. The fastest four move on as we continue on with the racing brackets. Coming up, Adam Anderson leads the series in every statistical racing category. Will he add to that tonight? Find out as Gravedigger hits the track next. We are back in Philadelphia for round two of racing. And our first matchup is a classic Adam Anderson in Gravedigger up against Tom Mentz in Max D. Adam comes in 27 and 10 with four wins. His 73% winning percentage leads the series. But when you're up against Tom Mentz, numbers usually don't matter. And here we go into that first corner. Adam Anderson going tight. Tom Mentz again uh -oh. that lane. And there's a problem with Gravedigger. So Max D has a clear shot at the finish line. Wow, if there was ever a chance for Adam to really put it on Tom Mentz, it was right here. He was in the good lane. Look at all the dust flying off of Max D as he crosses the finish line. Take a look at the original Super Glue replay. What happened with the Gravedigger? It's really hard to tell. He lost power for some reason. He was able to fire up, it looked like, and finish the race well after Tom Mintz. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Hopefully later on, Adam Anderson can come back. 
Next up in round two, Todd LaDuke in Megalodon up against Travis Mowry in Velociraptor. Todd right at 513 and 13 with two wins. Travis now 21 and 14. His winning percentage second on the series. Barry, they've met twice this year. They have split it. It doesn't get better than this on a Monster Jam racetrack. All right, this is to break the tie. Oh, and it looks like Velociraptor is blowing Megalodon away. There seems to be an issue with Megalodon as well. Right at the start for Megalodon, something going on in that truck. Velociraptor not laying off the gas. Megalodon starting to push it, but it's too little too late as Velociraptor will advance. We're seeing some issues creep up here in round two. That was a great pass out of that right lane. It's been historically slower all night, but look at that time from Travis Mowry, 18.230. That's a great time for him as he moves on. Next up, Kayla Blood in Soldier Fortune. She's going against Nick Pagnarulo in Kraken. Advancing from round one, Kayla undefeated on the year against Nick. Two wins to no losses. I love this track here because it shows a deep stage action. It gives you a couple extra seconds as a driver to kind of try to psych yourself or your opponent out. Yeah, you'd never want to psych yourself out. Kayla's into the lights first. Here comes Nick. It's time to go green. And Nick Pagliarulo off the line. Issues with Kraken as well. He's trying to get it right as Kayla Blood takes the corner and into that straightaway. Nick has caught up, but Kayla now hammering down on the throttle. Oh, I can see what's wrong with Kraken. He's got a broken right rear, either planetary or an axle. He's only got three-wheel drive. Hands an easy win over to Kayla Blood. Gremlins creeping up again here in round two. Take a look at the replay. The problem started for Nick right off the starting line. You can see he was had his hands full, probably sawing at that steering wheel, trying to get Kraken to go straight. As you can see he doesn't have that rear wheel pulling, something you got to have when you're driving these trucks fast. 18.222 gets Caleb Blood into the semifinals. And our final round two matchup is Gray Plips Mohawk Warriors Bryce Kenny going head to head with Mike Christensen in Vendetta. Bryce, two racing wins on the year. And this is the first time these two have squared off all season long in the racing competition. All right, Bryce is in the favorable lane. This left lane all night has been great, but Vendetta's off to an early lead. Let's see if he can hold it. Mike Christian's looked great so far in racing, but look at Bryce Kenny. You cannot get him into that straightaway. The former drag racer taking advantage into the corner and across the finish line. Bryce Kenny gets the win. Take a look at the original super glue, glued to the action replay. Wow, he did this turn great. This last turn, he carried a lot of momentum. Even though he went wide, it still paid off for him because he carried that momentum across the finish line first. What a great win from Bryce. 17.650, that is the fastest time of the night so far. That'll get him lane choice in the next round. It'll be Max D against Velociraptor and Soldier Fortune versus Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. Two will advance to the final round to try to get the first 12 points of the night. Bryce Kenny is on absolute rails right now, but will it lead to a racing victory? Find out when the semifinal round begins next on Monster Jam. We are back at Lincoln Financial Field and it's time for the semifinal round in racing. Our first matchup is Travis Mowry in Velociraptor with Lane Choice going up against the professor of Monster Jam University, Tom Mentz in Max D. This is going to be a good one. Travis has dominated Tom this year, Barry, 4-1 and one against the 14-time world champion. Yeah, and that's hard to do because, I mean, Tom Mentz, he is the professor for a reason. So he, look how calm and cool he is, waving at the crowd with his hand out the window. We'll see if he's all business. He's in the great lane. Let's see what he's got. And off the line, it is Velociraptor with the edge into the corner. We've seen Travis nail these turns all night. Tom gets a little slow around into the straightaway. Velociraptor all day. Max D slowing down. Wow, Velociraptor's had an easy night all night. He's been having really no competition across the finish line. It's going to be interesting to see what happened to Max D, though. Maybe a transmission issues. He's not really getting that drive. The truck's laboring. so. It could be something that his crew can fix to be back for a great clip skills competition later on. So Velociraptor will advance Max D. We're hearing now lost second gear. Transmission is going to be swapped after the great clip skills challenge. Our final race in this round, Caleb Blood, Soldier Fortune, Bryce Kenny, great clips, Mohawk Warrior. And Bryce, with the fastest time in round two, gets that lane choice. They have split the series so far, two and two against each other. Here we go, dead even at the chalk line, into the corner. And Caleb Blood trying to get that dust out of the way. Bryce Kenny turning on the Jets. Wow, there's a lot of traction in this right lane on that straightaway because they were dead even. And here we go again, Bryce Kenny. He's confidently across that finish line first. Making it look easy. Take a look at the replay. 
Yeah, he got a great drive in the straightaway, and that's what gave him the lead. Caleb Love was right there with him around that first turn, but she faltered coming around, and there it is, Bryce Kenny for the win. Wow, he's getting faster. Yeah, the two fastest drivers in the second round, the two fastest drivers in the semifinals as well. It's going to be Velociraptor up against Great Clips Mohawk Warrior for the first 12 points of the night and the overall lead. So out of Newport News, Virginia, going to be Travis Mowry in Velociraptor. His opponent from Kernersville, North Carolina, Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. You know, Bryce and Travis been battling back and forth for that fastest time. Lane choice always important. We see Bryce Kenny sitting over there in the left lane and Travis Mowry in the right lane. The right lane has been a little wobbly all night, but Travis has done it. You bring up a good point. You always want to put your best foot forward. And even though your opponent might be struggling, that's no reason to let off because the times matter. This lane choice is probably key in this race right here. Final race of the night, Bryce Kenny right out of the gates with the lead, and something is wrong with Velociraptor. What's going on in Philadelphia tonight? Wow, you know, we're late in the season. Attrition could start to play a role here, Scott, and Bryce Kenny is off to the races, off to the win, man. What a great time he's have here in another, Philadelphia. Another transmission gone here as we see Velociraptor lose it. Man, that's a tough break for Travis. I was really looking forward to maybe even seeing a photo finish out of these two because they're the only ones that have been consistently on rails all night. Bryce Kenny again, uh, no competition there. Looks easy across the finish line, fast all night, and he gets the win. And for Bryce, this is his third racing win of the season. Looking great to start tonight. Bryce gets 12 points with the win as we take a look at the first BKT overall point standings of the night. Travis Mowry, one behind him. Caleb Blood, minus two behind him. And Tom Minson, Mike Christensen round out the top five. Up next was the Great Clip Skills Challenge. In this competition, drivers could attempt two technical maneuvers on two wheels, so they could do a donut. They were judged by fans in attendance on creativity, skill, and execution. And with 12 points on the line, let's take a look back at our top drivers. Coming in fifth, Cole Vinard, the Black Pearl, getting this wheelie going here in Philadelphia. Wow, he's perfected this move, and that's great. That's a great look at the new body on Black Pearl, too. Fourth place, Camden Murphy, Bakugan Dragonoid. Look at the balance and the poise of Camden Murphy to be able to just stand there. 12,000 pounds just standing still with 1,500 horsepower. In third, Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior with a nose wheelie into a moonwalk. Bryce is known for walking these moonwalks backwards up the obstacle he just came off. That gets a great fan reaction. Bryce getting it done again. Started out winning the racing competition, now finishing third in skills. Hot start here at Lincoln Financial Field. Getting it all the way back across the pump. In second place, Adam Anderson hitting a bicycle in Grave Digger. Whoa, that's probably about as far over as you could get a Monster Jam truck and bring it back. Leave it up to Adam Anderson, though, to get it done. And check out the winning rod here from the professor, Tom Mance, doing this insane moonwalk again, the maximum moonwalk. He kept his composure. Even though it's slick, you see the front tires skid out on that moonwalk, but he was able to get it going. Whoa, what's he doing here? Going to try to get this thing going up the pot, and oh, instead wow. he lands it. Unbelievable save. That's Tom's fifth skills win of the season, and he's downstairs with Leslie Mears. Tom, I, I love that you're just making it up as you go out here. We always see something new from you. And so I've got to ask, was that intentional, that last move? It was intentional to get it to the other pod, but a little intentional rolled over. But you know, sometimes you're good, sometimes you're lucky. Tonight we're a little of both. Good and lucky, always a good combination in Monster Jam. As we take a look at the BKT overall point standings, Bryce Kenny out in front, Tom Menson second, Adam Anderson, Kayla Blood tied for third, and Camden Murphy and Mike Christensen nine points back. After two competitions, Bryce has the lead, but can he hang on? Find out with more Monster Jam from Philly next. You're watching round 19 of the 2023 Monster Jam season at Lincoln Financial Field. It's been back-to-back -back strong events for Bryce Kenny. He's been on fire tonight with a racing win and third place finish in skills for most of the season. We kept asking, is this the night Bryce finally wins the event championship? He put together one last round, and now he's on the verge of winning two in a row. Yeah, he's looking good, and it's good to feel confident. I, I feel like Bryce is very confident. He's explaining exactly what's going on on the track with the truck. And, of course, his great technician, Matt, has got great clips Mohawk Warrior running really good. 
Another driver who's having their truck run really good is Tom Mance and Max. He's having a great night with a skills win and a fourth place finish in racing. But what does Tom need to do to stay consistent and pull off a win? He's really got to do exactly what Tom is known for because he's only one point out of the lead right now. So that lead is not safe for Bryce Kenny at any measure, especially when you've got Tom Mintz trailing you. He's going to put on a great freestyle, I feel like. Let's catch you up on the current BKT overall point standings after two. Bryce Kenny with 22 points. Tom Mentz trails him by one. Adam Anderson and Caleb Blood six points off. And Camden Murphy and Knight Mike Christensen nine points away. Here's the freestyle order for round 19. Todd LaDuke in a rare spot leading things off. And then is backloaded here with Grave Digger, Max D, Grey Clips, Mohawk Warrior, and Bakugan Dragonoid all in the final five. So we can see a lot of action out early and a lot of action also at the end. So a book ended loaded lineup here in Philadelphia. When it comes to the freestyle order, Barry, the drivers in that 8 to 12 range, who has the best advantage to win the championship? I feel like Tom, this is his game to lose right now because he goes before Bryce, who's actually leading this competition. So he's going to put the pressure on him to make sure he matches or actually has to top his energy in freestyle. So it's going to be exciting to watch. And Tom only has two freestyle wins on the season, so he is due. Right now, let's kick off the final competition of the night with a two-time World Finals champion as Todd the Duke comes out with Megalodon. And Todd did win the overall here in 2022 in Blue Thunder. So he does have history in Philadelphia and a winning pedigree here. This is his moment to be able to set the freestyle bar high. He might be able to play spoiler for competitors going later on in the competition. It's always great to come out swinging per se and really put the bar so high that it's almost out of reach. Let's see if Todd has that in his freestyle recipe this evening. It's fascinating how much he has struggled in freestyle this season. He does have two wins, but it's been go big or go home for him as he gets a slap with a nice combo move there. His average is 10th on the series. He's a two-time World Finals champion, a guy who's won so many freestyle competitions in his career, but out of 12 drivers, he is placing 10th on average. Wow, yeah, that's very uncharacteristic for Todd LaDuke. And maybe you can attribute that to just a lot of the mechanical issues that they've had all season long. Sometimes that can get into your mind and affect the way you perform on the track. And yeah, we heard Tom Mintz say, you know, you, you can be good, you can be lucky. Well, Todd has not been very lucky this season. He has had a lot of mechanical gremlins creep up on him right now. He is going for the eight pack Megalodon out of nowhere. Flies through the air, he lands it, and he has got room for more board. Great move. Now it's time for Tyler Duke to throw caution to the wind. That's usually what his recipe includes doing that backflip, and he's, I looked like he was trying to go for a popper there, trying to add some technical moves into freestyle. It didn't work out for him there, so I think he's got to go back to his roots. That huge air is really what's going to pay off here. He's going for something maybe going on with the truck here. He's throwing technical moves in, tried for a bicycle, now a donut to finish off the freestyle run, but he lands the backflip. Check out the original super glue glue to the action replay. This is almost one of those moves where you, the crowd is not ready for it. It's the, the eight pack backflip is something that hides in the track, I like to say, whereas you can see the container backflip. But as far as that eight pack, he nailed it. Now that you've got the backflip, will there be more? Find out next on Monster Jam. Welcome back to round 19 in Philly. Earlier today, thousands of fans came out to the pit party at the link to meet the drivers and get to see the trucks up close. There's something for everybody to enjoy at the pit party, and we'd love to see you there at your next Monster Jam event. Moments ago, Mike Christensen continued freestyle in Vendetta, left some time on the clock and earned a score of 6.964. And Cole Vinard gave it a go in the Black Pearl, but mechanical issues ended his run early, and his score of 6.824 was one of the lowest of his season. And now we jump back into the action with Team Tom Fullery as Matt Pagliarulo comes out in Jester. Now, what was it you mentioned earlier about Jester? You, you said something about, I don't even know, you, you caught me off guard with that, and I really hope that Jester really performs well out here on the track this evening because you definitely had a line for the ages earlier in racing. Clown Prince of Bel Air, West Philadelphia, born and raised. More like uh, West Deltona, born and raised here for Matt Pagliarulo, Jester. Off to a start here, got the green body on. I love the different colors that Matt brings out. We've seen green, blue, orange, purple, and now bright green here, the color of the Philadelphia Eagles. Nice little nod there to the home team. Oh, I would never thought that he would have coordinated like that, but it makes sense. 
He's off to a great freestyle so far. Looks like Jester's landing good. He's got a good rhythm going. This is a hard track to perform on and keep things looking different as you see a great slap wheelie there. And he's got the dust flying. He's roosting all the competitors in the pits. He's having fun out here so far. Yeah, we talked about the loose dirt's effect on racing. What is it effect on freestyle? Really just being able to keep your momentum going and placing the truck where you want it to go because sometimes you get a little excited in freestyle and you maybe go into a turn too fast and because of the loose conditions of the dirt, you slide past your mark. So sometimes that can only really pay off. Sometimes it adds a great flair in freestyle as well. Second appearance in Philadelphia from Matt Pagliarulo. He's got some momentum here right off the jump. Big air for Jester. He goes flying, grazes by the single log, almost went right into it nose first, but he gets it done. Great jump from Matt Pagliarulo. I can tell Matt is having fun. He's able to really drift Jester around the track and keep up that momentum, keep the RPMs high in the engine, and that really is what captures the fans. We got some liquid flowing out the back of Jester. What is that? Uh, looks like it's a little hot, and probably just a little overflow from the antifreeze. Nothing to be concerned about. Take a look at the replay. He had some big air right here on this replay. As you can see, he almost cleared that entire obstacle. And then with the dust flying, the fans love that. This is the first time that they got to see that dust flying in freestyle. Next up is Kayla Blood in Soldier Fortune. She comes in six points off the overall event lead. So an opportunity here for her to put some pressure on Bryce, Tom, and Adam in front of her. Kayla's in a great spot here going out this early in freestyle because we have yet to see a container backflip and everybody loves the container backflip as she passes right by it here. Maybe she'll tackle that later on in her run. And one freestyle win on the season back in Anaheim. A fierce competitor, you know, a flag bearing driver here in Monster Jam, not only representing the veterans and the active military, but also all the female fans of Monster Jam. So she, she has double duty and I talked to her about that. She said that doesn't put any extra pressure on her at all. She welcomes all of that and trying to carry that flag for everybody that's a fan that comes here to try to inspire them to be great and, and follow their dreams. And she does that. I couldn't have said it better myself, Scott. And she's off to pretty good. Uh, freestyle. She really needs that wow factor coming up here. Maybe she's lining up for a huge air jump. Let's see if she hits the gas. Nice air onto the transfer. Comes right down into a wheelie combo. Little bit of air left on the back end of that jump as well. Now she's slowing down a little bit. Maybe trying to methodically pick out where she's going. Here she goes, picking it up. And here comes Soldier Fortune up over the cars. Big time jump again. She's got a lot of room and a lot of time left. She could go anywhere here. Yeah, and it's really cool on this side of the track you can see there's just a line of jumps so anywhere you go you know you're going to hit something it's up to you if you're going to hit it big or not and i can tell right now kayla is lining up for this huge backflip she comes in slow now brings it up turning it up and she goes high off the backflip wow. ramp raising the tires right on the back two wheels and she lands it on all four bkts that is a container backflip she had style points on the landing i mean with the backflip into a wheelie, that just boosts your confidence to go out and hit the next best thing as hard as you possibly can. Looks like that back right wheel not pulling as fast as the other, but that's not stopping her. And she's now hitting everything she can in front of her, right over. She's trying to bury this truck into the dirt. That was amazing finish. Listen to the crowd. As you can see, this backflip, this is a high approach to this backflip, and she nailed it. And of course, the rebound puts her into a cool wheelie, something you definitely don't always see. She had a great run there. Let's see the push-up. Is she gonna do the push-up? I think she's gonna do it. She's, she's right up there. Let's see, oh yeah. This always win the crowd over right here. 9.394 is the score that will take the lead. So Soldier Fortune with some incredible action in Philly. But for this round's action of the week, we go to the XL Center in Hartford, Connecticut with Grave Diggers Weston Anderson. This kid just absolutely laying it down onto the wheelie barn. Oh, that's a precarious position to be in. You don't know where you're gonna land. And look at that, he had the presence of mind to hit the throttle and Grave Digger is back on all four BKTs. Very impressive. You don't plan a jump like that, but obviously he knew where he was on the track, what he was hitting. You could see him turn the truck at the right angle. And then right here, watch when he looks like he is done and buried. He just turns the wheels the right way and gets the truck back on all four BKTs. Weston Anderson with this round's action of the week. Kayla Blood now has the freestyle lead, but will she take home the overall event win? Find out when freestyle continues next.
Adam Anderson is currently the series points leader on Stadium Championship Series Red, and whichever driver wins the series will earn an automatic bid to Monster Jam World Finals 22 in Nashville on July 1st. If you want to join us there, make sure you go to monsterjam.com. Get your tickets now so you can join us at the biggest event of the year. During the break, Travis Mowry completed his freestyle run. He would fill the clock. However, fans in Philly hard to impress, and he would get a score of 6.876. Then it was Nick Pagliarulo in crack, and he wouldn't fare any better. He would blow the motor in the truck with a few seconds left, and his score was 6.321. And right now, bringing out the shovel, here comes the five-time World Finals champion, Adam Anderson in Gravedigger. Uh, it's been an action-packed evening for not only our Monster Jam fans, but also the UNOH technicians behind the scenes. They've had a lot of work to do on these Monster Jam trucks. As I mentioned earlier, later on in the season, these trucks get put through the paces, and sometimes attrition tends to catch up to them, but Gravedigger is off and rolling. Looks like it's 100%. Well, the event championship on the line here for Adam. He comes in six points off the lead, but with Kayla Blood sitting in first, a freestyle win here is what Adam needs. He needs to take the lead away from her, or he will be eliminated from contention. If there's anybody that can do it, it's definitely Adam. He's going to match that energy that Kayla put out in Soldier Fortune. He's going to have to elevate it, though, if he wants to capture the hearts of these fans here in Philly. This is his sixth appearance at Lincoln Financial Field. He won freestyle here back in 2018, so he can definitely get it done. Seven freestyle wins on the season. That is first on the series. If these fans here in Philly are anything like the fans for the Eagles, they are hard to impress, and they don't give you an inch. So Adam is definitely going to have to bring it. He's doing a good job so far. Yeah, they threw snowballs at Santa Claus one time. You, you never want to see that happen, but Philadelphia, notoriously hard to impress, but they are getting a great show here today as Adam Anderson spinning Gravedigger around, and he is headed now for the eight-pack, and he has got it, lands on the back two BKTs, and he's got enough left to get off that pod and come in for more. He's got to beat that 9.394, and he could have just done it, Barry. All right, he's got 20 seconds left. Not even, less than 20 seconds left to really really persuade these fans that he's doing a better job than Caleb Blood did in Soldier Fortune. I wow. am off the jump, just off the dirt, flying everywhere through the wheels, through the chassis, and finally enough is enough for Adam Anderson. Check out the replay. The eight pack here is definitely set in right. I mean, it's rotating these trucks perfectly. Adam Anderson nailed it, and he's off to the races. That last jump was pretty impressive, though, I might add. Not quite enough to take the lead, so he is out of the event championship chase. Next up out of Fortville, Indiana, here comes Jamie Garner in El Toro Loco, getting the smoke started early for the El Toro Loco fans. That's definitely a staple in El Toro Loco. It's definitely a fan favorite. You got to hit that smoke anytime you hit the track. The fans just love it. I love Jamie in El Toro Loco because he brings his own style to the truck. We, we've got some great drivers on that team, such as Elvis Lainez, Armando Castro throughout Monster Jam. But Jamie Garner has his own style that he created with Overboard, and he has carried that over into El Toro Loco. He does such a great job. I think Jamie's probably had more fun this season taking on the character of the Crazy Bull. And not only does that reflect at the pit parties earlier, but also when he's hitting a loud pedal on the track this evening. I talked to Jamie about when he found out he was going to be in El Toro Loco. He said he, 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 got a, he got a package, he took a fire suit out and just stared at it for a minute because he didn't quite understand what he was doing. But he's loved every minute of it. As you said, it fits him so well. And it fits that style, that hard edge, hard nose freestyle run that Jamie Garner is known for. And he's got some time left here as he's roosted Gravedigger, gearing up for a big jump over the cars, cross threading across the ramp. It looked like he checked up just a little bit there. He might have not been in the position he wanted to put El Toro Loco in, but he, he came out OK on that jump, off to a great big jump there. Wow, great rebound. That little probably got him got his attention. Let's see if he tackles this next jump with the same amount of authority. Picking up some speed here again, coming back over the same jump, goes off to the left, same thing he did last time on the far side track. And now he's turning left here, score to beat 9.394 for Caleb Blood and Soldier Forge and Jamie Garner backing El Toro Loco up to get a clear lane and get some room. He's got it wide open here to the backflip ramp. He skies it, and he's going to land. He's going to go over again. Wow. I thought he had the landing, but a last second push causes the over rotation. Check it out. He just had too much wheel speed when the front tires hit the ground. Look how fast they're going, and it just carried the entire truck back over, almost a back-to-back -back flip. Man, that would have been awesome. 8.508 is the score. 
And here comes the 14-time World Finals champion, Tom Mintz and Max D. He trails the overall event lead by one. Bryce Kenny still to come, but he needs to land fifth or better to eliminate Caleb Ludd and stay in the hunt. All right, this is who I talked about earlier on when we talked about freestyle. Tom Mintz is in a great spot to be able to put that pressure on Bryce Kenny, who he trails only by one point coming into this freestyle competition. So if there's anybody that knows the task at hand, it's Tom Mintz. I talked about Todd the Duke with his two freestyle wins and his 10th average on the series. Tom Mintz has two wins, but he's the second highest average on the series. How do you have the second highest average of 12 drivers and only have two wins? He's been consistent. He's probably finished second a bunch of times, maybe a third as well. So as long as you're consistent, you can have that great average and not necessarily win because it's only one point difference. So it's not that big of a difference. Oh, save it. He's got it. Great save. And don't forget, they replaced the transmission after skill. So he's got a new transmission in this truck, and he is trying to open this thing up. It's his sixth appearance in Philly. He's got a freestyle win and an overall event win, and he's got some nice air breaking in that new transmission. Anytime the UNOH technicians get, you know, their heart rate up with chasing the fact that they have to replace these parts very quickly, you want to go out there and really put on a great performance, not only for them, but of course, all our great Monster Jam fans here. And it's a pressure cooker out there in the pit area for them to get these trucks back into contention and competition. And Tom is going slow to the backflip ramp, but a lot of air, he gets it, and he's got some time to keep going. Great backflip by the professor. Perfect rotation there. You can definitely see the difference in approach from El Toro Loco, who kind of over-rotated just a little bit. Tom Mintz probably was watching that and said, all right, I know exactly what to do. This is Tom Mintz's moment to be able to hit that wow factor, and he's approaching this sideways, but it looks like he's just going to park it. King of the mountain right there for Tom Mintz, Max D. Great run. We got some fire, Barry. What's going on? He's just trying to match the, the paint scheme of his truck here. Oh, I like, like that. Take a look at the super glue. Glue to the action replay. It looked like Tom was going for that momentum moonwalk right here, but he was a little twisted up, got up on the bicycle. Great save here. And Tom is out of the truck. OK, and addressing the Philly fans here, 8.700 from Max D. That score is going to move him into third in freestyle. Caleb Blood still has the freestyle lead. Adam Anderson in second, Jamie Gardner in fourth, Todd the Duke in fifth. Two drivers still to hit the track. The event championship is on the line when freestyle continues. Great Clips Mohawk Warrior hits the track next on Monster Jam. Welcome back to Stadium Championship Series Red. Let's take one more look at the BKT overall point standings entering freestyle. Bryce Kenny had the lead. Tom Mentz won behind him. Adam Anderson, Caleb Blood were six off. And Camden Murphy and Mike Christensen nine away from the leader. So here comes Bryce Kenny with the event championship on the line. He needs to finish no lower than third in freestyle to get the win. Otherwise, it will go to Tom Mentz. We've been asking this question all show long. Can Bryce Kenny win two in a row? He can, and, and it's really his event to lose right here. He's got to really come out with a vengeance, and he knows that. I mean, the first two jumps that he's brought out to this crowd have been huge. So let's see if he can continue that momentum all the way through freestyle. Well, he won freestyle here in 2022, so a repeat of that performance would get him the event championship. We saw some big air, almost went a little too hard to the side, was able to get it squared down on all four BKTs. And now finding a square ramp to hit, nearly clears it, and over the crush cars goes Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. Sometimes on a slick track like this, it can be hard to line up perfectly the way you want with these jumps because the dirt is so loose out here. These trucks having so much horsepower, they just want to spin out sometimes, but it looks like Bryce has got it fully under control. Another nice jump now coming back to the other side of the track, continues to go, hitting everything in front of him just over the ramp. That Almost <laughs> using that ramp as a jammer. Yeah, that could have been disastrous, but he barely escaped just clipping the edge of that ramp. Huge air, though, off the race lane. Whoa, hang and on. He's going way too hard out of that jump, and he's going to end up on the hood. Take a look at the original super glue glued to the action replay. Man, I feel like Bryce knew exactly what he needed to do in this freestyle, but this landing did not fare too well. He just kind of got a little bad bounce, got out of shape, just couldn't save it. 6.785, Barry, that's going to take him out of the event championship conversation. But we have one more competitor here in freestyle, and it is Camden Murphy in Bakugan Dragonoid. 
This is his first ever appearance in freestyle on this track. What do you expect out of Camden right now? I expect Camden to really close out this event with a bang. This is a low moment where you can see Great Clips Mohawk Warrior is sitting there crippled. So it's his opportunity to show the fans, OK, I'm here, and I'm going to show you guys what it really, truly looks like to close out a freestyle. And Adam Anderson has gained three points on him so far tonight. So he would want to try to get some of those points back because every round we do here, Bari, anytime Adam even takes a point away from Camden, it, it makes it a lot harder for him to climb back up and really put himself in position to win the series championship. Absolutely. As the season goes on, Camden is kind of running out of time to really catch back up. So he's got to take advantage of every time he's on the track. Exactly what he needs to do right there. That was great air. He's got two freestyle wins in 2023. And now Camden Murphy drifting wide on the track, trying to hammer the throttle over the cars, whips the truck right onto the hard side. Nice side slap there for Camden Murphy. He's got some room here to recover. And he comes right down the opposite side of that straightaway, back over, same thing, crossing it up over the ramp, lands it a lot better this time. That was a veteran move there. As you could see earlier on, before he hit that jump, the sway bars were tweaked, and he straightened them back out. And here comes the backflip. He may tweak him again here as he goes for the backflip hot hard Whoa. again. And he tried for the moonwalk. He is up over the container. You never want to see that. Wow, that was amazing rebound off of that backflip. If he could have maybe just hit this throttle a little more ginger, he got a little excited, and the truck just reared up onto the wheelie it's bar. A, it's a wasteland out there by the backflip ramp right now. Let's take a look at her final freestyle top five. Kayla Blood will get the win, her second of the year. Brave Digger will finish in second, Max D in third, El Toro Loco in fourth. And that run by Camden Murphy solidifies him in the fifth spot to round out the top five. Kayla Blood, big time run right now. Let's go downstairs to Leslie Mears and Kayla Blood. You told me earlier you had to stay calm, cool, and collected. And your hard work out there and concentration paid off. Absolutely. You know what? The last few weekends I've been running into a lot of problems in freestyle. Just going to want to get out there and go too hard, too fast, too soon, and break in planetaries right and left. So I wanted to come out here, be cool, calm, and collected, then tear it up. We made the backflip. I'm super excited. This is my second freestyle win of the year. I did it for all of you girls, all the men and women in uniform, and this guy right here. Crowd absolutely going nuts for Kayla Blood. She gets 12 points for the win. As we check out our final BKT overall point standings, Tom Men's going to win this one 31. Adam Anderson, Bryce Kenny, and Camden Murphy rounding out the top five. This is Tom's second career event win in Philly. And right now, let's hear from the overall event champion. Hey, we had a great night tonight. We got fourth in racing. Just had a little issue there. Came back in skills challenge. Took it all the way to the top. Won it. Made a super cool recovery. Got the job done. Landed back on all tires. Fortunately, that went great. Then we had to make a quick swap of the transmission in order to come out for freestyle. Tom Perante and the team, they got it done. We brought it back out here for you. Bryce is creeping up, you know. He's got a great crew chief and Matt. They're getting it done out here. We've had our challenges, but tonight we proved we can still get the job done and keep ahead of him in points. We got to keep going. Stadium championship red is not over yet and we're not ready to quit. That's a wrap in Philadelphia. Next up for Stadium Championship Series Red, we head to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, where we may crown a series champion. For Barney Musauer, I'm Scott Jordan. We'll see you right here next time on Monster Jam.